Well, that move by the U.S. adding a new dimension to trade relations with Africa. Let's chat more about the fallout. Global business producer and former CGTN East Africa correspondent Maria Galang is in studio with me. Maria, how has Rwanda reacted to this? Well, Rochelle, it's interesting. Rwanda hasn't really battered an eyelid with this news. Uh, they've responded to the suspension saying that they've already introduced um, their textile companies to other markets like the European Union, for example. And it's already said that it's going to compensate um, companies that are going to be affected by this. Now, with the exception of Kenya and East Africa, not a lot of other countries have actually benefited very much from the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA. Um, that's mostly because um, there's not a lot of trade that goes out to the US from these countries. Kenya has mostly benefited in the past, but when you're looking at countries like Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, uh, the UN Commission did a report to see what would happen if um, the US banned these countries from AGOA, and it, it appeared that it would export from these countries would only go down by two-tenths of a percent. That's not very much. And Rwanda is quite interesting. It's a landlocked country. It has a very young population that came out from apartheid. So it's really had to build itself up. And the textile industry is one of those uh, sectors that it's really trying to push to be free from secondhand clothing imports. And so far, it's, it's kind of working for them. So an interesting development there. Now, we know that Rwanda's neighboring countries like Kenya and Uganda at some point also wanted to curb these exports of U.S. second-hand clothing. So what happened there? Well, yes, they had an agreement, all the Eastern, uh, East Africa community, that's Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, they were all going to stop second-hand clothing imports by 2019. But with a lot of pushback from the U.S. threats, all of them except Rwanda had to back down eventually. And also local uh, textile traders, they were also pushing the government saying, no, we need this. This is our livelihoods. You can't take this away from us. So um, together with used cars and counterfeit drugs, secondhand clothing is really one of those things that is just so prevalent in all of Africa, except perhaps for South Africa, which has, because of apartheid and the sanctions during apartheid, it built up its own industries, including the textile industry, but all these other countries in Africa, there's really, there's really not a lot of the textile industry coming up. Um, countries like Kenya, they have export processing zones now um, where they're making high quality products for handbags for companies like Vivian Westwood, for Levi's, uh, for export through AGOA and other um, free trade agreements with Europe, but um, they also give the opportunity for locals to try these, some of these, like the jeans, for example. They have exhibitions where locals can come and buy these products at a lower cost. So, Now, now let's also look at this, this lack of regional solidarity. How do you see that, and how do you see that impacting perhaps future plans for trade? Well, there's, it's, it's definitely difficult because a lot of these countries have different forms of governance, different resources, so there's... There's, they're competing in different ways. Everyone wants to move ahead. Uh, different countries want to have their own trade deals with China, with the US, with the EU. Uh, some countries are ready to come together for this continental free trade agreement that they just ratified. Some countries are not. So it'll be definitely interesting to see what happens. There's a, been a big push for infrastructure, uh, trade infrastructure. Right. China's played a big part in that. They're, they're building roads, railways, ports, not just to move goods in and out of the continent, but to move goods within the continent itself. So it's definitely something to look forward to with 1.2 billion people on the continent and a combined uh, $4 trillion um, in combined uh, consumer and business spending. We're looking at a potential, the, the world's biggest free trade area. So right. they really have to come together, I think, on this. Certainly the, the future wide open there. Thank you so much. CGTN's Maria Galang reporting there.